Oh yes, oh yes. Endless possibilities. Yeah, if you are not careful with this car, you end up with all kinds of possibilities. Oh. That's the C63S Coupe. Let me shift it to a position. Oh. Every time you start the car, right, you just feel like you just had an orgasm. Yeah. That's how this car is. I always got confused with Mercedes parking brake orientation, you know. You pull is to release and then you press is to... Anyway. Let me shift it to a position where I can show you guys more. Now... Now, whenever you reverse a Mercedes-Benz, you'll notice that there are no beepers. You have to look through the reverse camera. Look at the light bar there. That light bar actually shows the proximity of uh, whatever. You see? Now, it lights up. Okay. I guess uh, I'm not blocking anyone anymore. Okay. That's about it. Yeah. It will only beep when it goes into red. Okay. Now, since I'm in the car... I might as well just go through the interior. Let's put the uh, parking brake by pressing this button. Oh no, parking. Put the uh, gear lever into park and it should engage uh, the parking brake by itself without me pulling by opening the door. Yep. So this is one thing I really like about Mercedes Benzes. Now, this is a C Class. This is a very very expensive c-class okay it, of course it's a c-class coupe all right but everything else that is hidden inside is different because this has the exact same engine as the amg gt four liter v8 twin turbo and it makes 510 horsepower it is a beast it is an absolute beast this okay now this is the edition one so they have some you know interesting stitchings and all that but of course these cars uh, you be, you'll be able to sort of you know specify what you like one thing that I really like about these new Mercedes AMGs are the seats they look epic okay they look beautiful something straight out of Aston Martins or Bentley's okay the quilted leather over here the uh, it just looks really good but there are certain parts where you look at these stitches yeah they don't look as well finished as those in a Bentley but of course this is not a Bentley okay it is still in, in a Mercedes AMG but then all this let's see look at that it's a bit loose now uh, but of course this car has been abused by many people nevertheless uh, uh, there should be a way to just snap it back Anyway, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't cause that, all right? Uh, Burmaster, stereos, and it, the whole car just looks so emotive. I like it. I like it a lot. The interior design is just something else. And that's the uh, perfume holder where you can buy perfume from Mercedes-Benz. You slot it in, it will route it through the air vents. Now, this is a sports car, right? It is a 510 super sports car but it also has you know amenities like you know lane departure blind spot monitoring system a distronic plus and then uh, it will detect when you are too near to the car and then it, it might auto brake and there's a 360 camera and um, you have you have an IWC Schaffhausen clock here would it be it would, wouldn't it be nice if you can just press a button and the thing pops up and then you can put it onto a watch band or something like that. Very nice for some a clock in the car, but in terms of the dial, the faceplate and all that, I'm not that keen with the phone and all that. Especially those really thick uh, minute hands and hour hands. Anyway, the interior is the same as a C-Class, but of course this is in carbon fiber. I like the fact that they, didn't make, they did not make it gloss. Imagine if it is gloss carbon fiber, right? it will look absolutely hideous. But this is sort of matte finish, so I quite like it. I love this compartment because uh, without the gear lever, they just, you know, they open up this area so you can put a lot of stuff here. And this cup holder, if you remember my previous video on the CLS where they have an over-engineered cup holder, this is the most uh, 
unengineered cup holder because you can just take it out which is nice but i don't think okay there's a little bit of over engineering going on you don't, yeah, i don't think it needs to be that i mean it's all right it's all it's all right uh but once you take it out tada, a very nice compartment but then you can put it back somehow sort of lock it yeah so that it holds itself in place this thing here beautiful sculpture looking control touch sensitive here you can write text and all that and then you can turn and select but it is one of the most confusing systems to use in terms of its menu structure because it's sort of in, instead of a menu system that you go linear in one direction Mercedes sort of figure out something that goes like top and bottom so the main ones are on top and then you come down here for display and then you go down here for the options within that so um, after I explain it might sound logical but actually when you are using it it is mm, not very user friendly I would say it's not very user friendly but it looks good I love the graphics and sometimes it doesn't make sense how it jump but you see I, I, anyway forget about it okay the uh, dynamic controls are here you can go all the way from okay you won't be able to see anything from here but from here you can see it okay you can go individual individual uh, you can do put it in adaptive mode so which is sort of like automatic and then you can come down to comfort you can see it's quieter now and then you go to sport which uh, heightens up the uh, throttle response and all that but then, and then you go down, you go to Sport Plus, and then the exhaust is in Sport Plus, and you can see the deep rumble, and then you go into race. When you're in D, if you go into race mode, the the uh, rev counter will actually sort of like, boom, it will do that. So this car, right, all its character is in the engine, because the engine is really, really something else. It has got to be one of the best uh, V8s out there, best sounding V8, you know, really high torque and all that. Okay, the pedal shifters feel great. They are big, chunky, and I like this setting chrome finish. Again, um, there's the uh, steering wheel controls. This one, to you know, and then this one is the Distronic controls. You can, uh, you know, turn all the way here for adding distance and all that. Not very user friendly, I would say. I mean, they could have just replicated over here. Okay. As for these buttons, they're all right. They don't feel... I mean, I don't have issues with them. So I'm, I'm fine with all this, okay? But I just find myself having to look at them again and again just to remember, you know, because... Uh, slightly different, I would say. Like most cars right here, you can easily toggle between what is a replication of that and then you see what is going on down there and then you change them. But this one is just uh, a bit... Okay, you can, see, and then you go in, and then, or you can go back out, but it doesn't show you you're in that screen, you see. Uh, you can go into navigation, and then, uh, oh, the fonts are huge. So, yeah, anyway, Alcantara here, there's a center point here, this flat bottom, all this feels really good. The materials are nice. It's design, it is still the design that really hands it the win. And given that Mercedes, right, you, the, the seat controls are over here, so you can have the seat, you know, really towards the edge here, and then the door blockers can be large. Now, one thing I noticed, which is the same as the E Class, see, this is the throttle pedal, right? And then that's the brake pedal. But this thing here, look at that, that's the footrest for the left foot. It is tiny, it can barely put half of my foot. So, uh, as I drive, right, I keep I keep finding myself having to look for a position to rest my left foot, which I'm not able to, or the E-Class, okay? That is something they could, they, they could have improved it. Maybe in the left-hand drive version, it is better. It's just that, you know, once you put it in the right-hand drive, all this offset and all that, but other cars can do it. They should be able to do it, all right? Coming here, in the center console, it splits like that, like like uh, most BMWs. And then uh, there's a strap here to hold your things. There are two USB ports and SD card slot. It's all nicely carpeted, high quality materials and high quality finishing. So 
is this cabin way higher quality than the 3 series cabin by far it is by far way higher quality um, but is the e-class higher quality than the 5 series nope the 5 series is higher quality so uh the sun visors are here nothing special this one is the same as all c-class i mentioned in my earlier video this this bit looks a bit cheap other than that nothing this is an 800,000 ringgit high performance super sports car all right let's go inside yeah that's all it does so uh i am very fat so i have to move it all the way there let me come inside look at the rear seats they look exquisite right they just look exquisite and all these little quilted pockets became very comfy you see this thing this isofix cover mercedes has been using this for the longest time you just plop it plop it in and then you won't lose this but somehow in the new cars right in the newer cars they design the detachable type just like audi so you will lose it and you will need to buy them very nice to have cup holders at the back here some compartments even my 6 series doesn't have it and uh oh beautiful see this is attention to detail even when you are in the back seat they make sure it looks beautiful some alcantara here some leather here the stitches goes all the way here some armrests you know cup holders and all that i like it i like the rear seat space of the c-class coupe because it doesn't make you feel like you're a second grade citizen and all that there are two air vents here hi wally -E, where's your mouth this wall wall e is in every single mercedes now right the e class the s class the c class and it's cute little nose here now let me turn myself back i kid you not you know some people are saying that what do you mean the c class coupe has good rear seat space it's a coupe i know you you'd be stupid if you compare a coupe to a sedan rear seat so don't be stupid it's a coupe okay now, given that it's a coupe, or a coupe, look at how I sit. I sort of, I'm sort of sitting properly compared to my 6 Series where I, I can't fit at the rear, okay? So the rear, the 6 Series, right, the rear leg rooms are like, you have like that much. Of course, uh, one of the ways they do this is to give you the impression that, sorry, let me turn you around. They give you the impression that there is a lot of leg room, right? That's because this is really small. Okay? Now, let's go out. How do you step out of a coupe? First, you put your right foot out, shift your ass, and then you contort yourself out. Okay? That's how it is. It's a, it's a coupe. Um, should you buy a coupe? You should. Because you, you will not be the one who's climbing in and out, okay? So, it will be the other sucker. Now, do I like this car? I love it. I freaking adore this car because it is very special. Okay? I like it for everything it is. It is very thirsty. It is very special. It is very good looking. It is all kinds of expletives, okay? Let's come to the rear. There is a splitter here. There's a small little carbon fiber spoiler. All right. Uh, I, I'm, up till now, I cannot find if there's any button to open the boot from outside. I just couldn't find it. Anyway, uh, these are some fake bits, but it looks good. It makes the bumper look good. All right. It may, it may be generating some vortex. I, I, I'm not sure. Okay. The exhaust. Okay. These are exhaust covers. The tips are inside. Uh, some a lot of idiots like to say oh these are fake tips shut up because listen to bobby when someone hits you from behind you will not bend your exhaust so learn this and don't follow the crowd and talk nonsense just say that they are fake they're fake come on they're there just that when they are not connected it's better because this part can flex okay and it won't be so hot because if you want all these glamour bits okay if you want all these glamour bits you know carbon fiber and all this right you cannot have your exhaust connected all the way and then you melt all this thing you know there's there needs to be some form of you know ventilation going on these are the 
diffusers uh, they look good and they're functional okay so remember if next time someone tells you uh, fake exhaust is, is is bad tell them what Bobby said okay you want someone to bend your entire exhaust when someone a, a rear rear you know hitting it from the rear another thing is if you want all these glam bits you know covering the, 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 the circumference of your exhaust you cannot connect them okay AMG C63S back then um, uh, 60 70 years ago if you have a Mercedes logo it means your high performance after that when there's an AMG there it means you are high performance and then you have the 63 batch means your high performance but now you need that S me to mean that you're high performance maybe next time they'll put an R here okay the car does it look good it looks really good it doesn't look like the usual coupe uh, styling because you see there's sort of a swept back look there is a very very short boot okay and uh, I especially like this part this indentation here I love this indentation then they put the V8 by turbo there they don't need to put some fake plastics or whatever there. They just need to make the body panel to be indented to hold the proud V8 by turbo there. There is white body on this car, which looks splendid. Look at this line that runs all the way to the back. And then you can see how large the front fenders are. Okay, It makes the car look muscular. It makes it look good. If you cannot afford a C63, do buy a C200 or C250 coupe and make it white body. But don't slap on the C63 batch. Lah, huh? But make it white body. It makes the car look good. You have, to, you have to do it. You owe it to society to do it. The headlamps, they've always been beautiful in all new Mercedes-Benzes. Their headlamps just look glorious. Okay, These are not fake intakes. There are the, I don't know, oil cooler or intercooler or whatever cooler. It's all in there. All the cooling stuffs are all in front of there. Here, it hides all the uh, radars and all that. So Mercedes is very clever to do this sort of wing-shaped thing. And then a proud, huge Mercedes logo housing all the uh, radar or LiDAR or whatever DAR, you know, equipments. This thing as well, it looks good. I love it. I kind of felt that they could have designed a bumper with carbon fiber bits to integrate a holder for number plates next time. They should consider that, huh? I think it looks good. Huh? This car looks very emotive. And I like the fact that they have these. Maybe it's a cover, but it looks racetrack stuff, right? It looks like all the GD3 RS with a single hub uh, nut or whatever. The huge AMG brakes. Vented, drilled, very nice. So that's the exterior. And uh, should you buy this car, 800,000, I think you should. Because I think it is a more emotional proposition than even a base Carrera. Or a Carrera S for that matter. It might not be as easy to drive as a Carrera. And um, if you're looking at the uh, Cayman S and then whatever that, this guy here actually gives you way more excitement. Yes, if you're, uh, if you want or whatever, be scalpel, pre precise, you might like the Cayman and its handling or even the Lotus Evora and all that. But this car, there is something with it. It is like a mini Bentley Continental GT Speed Yes This is A mini Bentley Continental GT Speed So Very nice However You can top up 100,000 ringgit 140,000 ringgit And buy the Lexus LC Ha ha That should put things into perspective Okay 4 litre car What's the road tax? For company, it's 19,267 ringgit for a 4 litre V8. Alright? Nice? Very nice. Easy to drive? Nope. It's not easy to drive. This car needs some taming. It is a beast. Alright? See you guys.
guess you can tell what this is. All right, I'm behind the wheel of a C63S Coupe. And immediately, the first thing that I don't like is the fact that the left foot rest is non-existent. I can only rest at half a foot. And what else? Nothing much. First off, visibility. Visibility is very good, okay? I like the driving position. Uh, the brake pedals are okay. They are not not like the E-Class. The E-Class, the brake pedals are a bit too much to the left, okay? And then, the, uh, of course, the footrest is the same. That's, I can only put like half my feet there. It's uh, not very comfortable footrest for the left foot. And through the A-pillars, they... Visibility is better than the E-Class as well because um, they use the same side mirror, the kind of uh, very aerodynamic side mirrors. But then as, at least this one, there's a gap between that side mirror and the A-pillar. So it's not completely blocked off. This side is, so yeah. As for the rear, even though from the profile, you might think that uh, visibility might not be that good but thanks to those really tiny rear headrests so uh, visibility is all right I don't have any issues with the rear work visibility um, of course I appreciate that this this is not the uh, the matte gray with those yellow sticker lines those are pretty inviting for uh, Volkswagen GTIs and Golf R's. <laughs> if they spot you, they're gonna hunt you. And uh, because your car is about, I don't know, 500,000 ringgit more expensive, so it's very unlikely that you will play with them on public roads, uh, which isn't encouraged anyway. Still. Now, this car, 4 liter V8. 500 hover horsepower, yada yada yada. I guess you all know the specs. And if you don't know the specs, go Google yourself. Don't ask in the comments. You look stupid when you ask something like, what's the horsepower? What's the... Seriously, go Google yourself, all right? Um, you're watching a video because the video is supposed to tell you how it feels, right? How it sounds. It sounds glorious. Let me tell you that. Mercedes... Uh, I don't care whether it's synthesized or whether it's pumped into the cabin, whatever. I don't care, all right? But they are V8s. They know their shit. It sounds good and it sounds organic. It doesn't sound fake. videos that you watch right and then the guy just throttle and then the girl next to him is just you know they're not even shouting right this car does that to me the driver is I think part of the reason is because the front end of this car is something that you have to I would say properly <laughs> you have to anticipate it because uh, it just is not the type where it feels bomb planted and then you know definitely the steering has feel the steering has plenty of feel and uh, it's accurate and all that and then the rear the rear you're, you're on a straight line you throttle and then there's a little bit of that going on there yeah. Sorry for the long video that... Hell yes, man. I love this car. If, if, you, if you bought this car, right, you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself because you could have opted for something else, but man, you, go, you went with the beast. Yes. Even rolling off is like, my God. I think 
most of it has to do with the sound maybe what a great great car to drive this the power of the engine the delivery the transmission everything everything about this car is just unbelievable i can use all sort of all sorts of expletives but then uh oh nice that's an audi wagon does make me feel special in fact right this cabin I'm not joking here this cabin this the, this noise this this engine all these things right it makes me feel more special than in a uh, Porsche Cayman or a Boxster or maybe even a base 911 Carrera yeah man I can't believe I'm seeing this I mean, you hop into a, a, a base 911 Carrera, right? Then you look at its, its interior. Yes, it's well built. It's, it's by far, it's, it's two magnitudes better built than this, this cabin. But it's how this cabin looks that makes me feel... Mm. When you put this next to the Carrera, right? The, both of their interiors, right? One looks like a, uh, a boardroom blazer. This one sort of looks like a lingerie, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I feel naughty just looking at it, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, you can spec your way in, in the Carrera, you can spec your way into making it however it is, but then the square aircon vents and all that, uh, that's sort of let you know that we're serious, we're serious. Even when we're having fun, we're seriously having fun, you know, Porsche, Porsche has to be serious. Yeah, we're fun seriously fun that's that's Porsche but this guy feels a bit lunatic this yeah you know when you have a fun guy in the room someone like Johnny Depp's character in Pirates of the Caribbean or um, yeah you 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 just wanna you know stand next to him you know you that's that attraction when you're a little bit naughty a little bit you know not that you're not serious, but you are intellectually not serious. You know your shit, so you're chill. Yeah, I think that's that's roughly how it is. This is not bad. Hmm. I enjoyed it. I really enjoy it. Oh. Of course. Of course, I hope that the uh, throttle response. But I can't. I mean, this is not. This is no longer the old 6.2 liter V8. This is a 4 liter V8 twin turbo. So, um, given that it's turbocharged, um, I'm gonna have to wait for that. But somehow, I find myself prodding the throttle more, not for forward momentum, but for audio enjoyment. Yeah, because I just want to hear the engine. Or the exhaust note goes into that I want to hear that more But of course this is my third day So maybe in one week I mean if you own the car by the second week You'll be like oh, nah, it's, it's a bit too much noise maybe You know, you don't feel that humans are like that right But as a daily car I don't see how this is not practical You know too many Malaysians right Every time you guys go like, oh, I want to buy a four-door, it's more practical. Fuck you. You guys are stupid. Two doors, right? Their reason for their existence is to look good. So if you buy a two-door, you look good every day. So you use what it is created for every single day. What is the, what is the, 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 uh, the underlying logic of practicality? The word practicality means something that you can use every day. Now, if you look around you, people who buy four-door cars, how many of them even use their rear doors? 
in the span of one week. Maybe the weekend, not every weekend, right? So a lot of people fall into this, this, is that a mind trap? No, it's just sheep mentality. Yeah. Oh, I need to get a photo. Oh, it's more practical. Oh, oh. Nonsense. How difficult it is to just open the door and flip the seats and put your child in and all that. It's not difficult at all. And there are a lot of four-door cars, right, where the rear doors are... I don't think they're practical as well. But two-door cars, they look good. They depreciate slower. Do they? Not exactly. Okay, the problem is Malaysia, right? Uh, the down payment for cars, for two-door cars, is 30%. Yeah. Malaysia really, we really have some stupid rules that needs some addressing because uh, SUVs pay half road tax and not any SUV, the big ass ones, they get to pay half or a discounted road tax. It's, it's, it's really weird. And then two-door cars have to pay 30% down payment. What nonsense is that? Why? Right? They don't want us to feel stylish. Too bad. Yeah. I think this car has the sense of occasion. It really looks good. And, and like, like, like my E-Class video, you tend to forgive them for a lot of things just because they speak to the emotional part of you. And that's how new mercs are. Mm. There's one really bad thing about driving this car. Today I got bullied by an auntie, I got bullied by some uncle, I literally got bullied by everybody. Everyone is just like, no, I'm not letting you pass. Everyone just became Gandalf suddenly when you drive this car out. First of all, it's a Mercedes-Benz, right? And that will trigger, that triggers people. Okay, be it inferiority complex or superiority complex that the brand itself will, will just trigger people secondly all the racing bits right the big wheels and all that and of course not everybody are car fanatics they might not know this is a c63 amg they might just think that i'm just a punk with some putting bits and pieces of stuffs on my yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm too old for being a punk anyway but well, you, get, you get what I mean right so yeah people just don't let me merge I put my signal they'll race up and stop me from merging they don't allow me to go into junctions and all that yeah that's my experience today when I drove a mini or some other unassuming cars people say oh there you go cutie poor ugly English bulldog or cute for that matter yeah so yeah that's that's this one bad thing <laughs> oh, guys <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. so I placed 100 ringgit there mm -hmm. and uh, let's see if Cass gets to pick it okay oh you guys can see okay, okay. one two three <laughs> okay, this is such a fail. So actually, I need to stick the hundred.